The road we're on is paved in Garth. Come along on the journey. As we explore Garthology. Think of it more as a conversation. I like that. So if this is truly a conversation, then I say let the conversation begin. Hey everyone, it's Deb. And I'm Pete. And I'm Jess. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 5 of Garthology. Today's episode will focus on the fourth bracket of our special Garth Games Song Battle. Today's battle will be the final of the first round battles and the last of the individual category songs duking it out. Today's songs are in the bottom right corner of our bracket form, Cowboy Songs. So for our first battle, it will be the Cowboy Song versus Rodeo. All right, Pete, let's start with your pick. Who do you have in this first Cowboy Song battle? Well, when you're comparing Cowboy Songs to a song that literally says the Cowboy Song, it makes it really difficult to choose a song that doesn't say the Cowboy Song. (laughs) However, Rodeo has always been one of my absolute favorites. I love the upbeat tempo of it. I love everything that it's about. I love that the lyrics actually relate to things that are part of a rodeo, you know, chaps, cowboy hats, and, you know, gold belt buckles and things like that. So on this one, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty easy. It was the rodeo for me. How about you, Jess? I love the cowboy song. I really do. And I wasn't as familiar with it until we covered it here on the podcast, but I really fell in love with that song, Yeah, but it just can't beat rodeo for me. I agree. I mean, there's, you know, there's few songs out there that are more cowboy, I think, than Rodeo. And so probably against any other song of his that you might call a cowboy song. I Anything's going to be hard to beat Rodeo. We'll see going ahead what's in the brackets. But for this one, it has to be Rodeo. What about you, Deb? Okay. Ooh, come on, come on, come on. All right. Well... No, it's totally rodeo. I uh. had to go with the rodeo. <laughs> I love the cowboy song. It's a beautiful song. It's sweet. It's sad. And Garth's vocals are so good in it. But I mean, up against rodeo, I had to pick rodeo. It's such a classic Garth song. And like when you see him live in concert, the second rodeo starts, you know it. You know yeah. exactly what song it is. And the opening beats, everybody jumps up and they're on their feet. And by the way, if you guys haven't listened to this in Amazon Music in a while, they've added this thing or it was there before and I didn't notice it, but it's something called Ultra HD. And this song, they have it in Ultra HD. And I listened to it with my AirPods and dang, that music sounds so good, especially yeah. if you turn it up just a little too loud. Cause yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. awesome. It's <laughs> yeah. so good. How can you not turn rodeo up louder though? It's exactly. one of those songs. The, right? The right. music's so gritty and raw and I just love it. The drum beat's amazing and Garth's twang is so good. So yeah, it was full on rodeo. Had to be. All right. So that takes us into our next battle. Rodeo's moving on. Now on to our second battle, and that is That's What Cowboys Do versus Much Too Young. So, Jess, let's start with you. Who's your winner in this bracket? Well, this time around, again, it was two songs that I love and one that I kind of knew better and one that I didn't know as well. And mainly just because That's What Cowboys Do is newer. They actually play that one quite a bit on the radio here, so I do hear it a lot, and I really love that song. But I couldn't choose it over Much Too Young. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I've loved that song too long. I know it too well, and I'm just partial to it. So that was my pick. I had to go with Much Too Young. What about you, Deb? What do you think? So this one, I liked this battle because... It pits Garth's very first single against a song from his most recent album, 
So it's like True. young Garth versus mature Garth. <laughs> That's a good word for that. <laughs> And so I like that. I thought that was very appealing to me. So I was glad that it worked out that way. And I have to tell you, I love That's What Cowboys Do. It's one of my favorite from Garth's Fun album. It's such a great song. And so I had to pick much too young. Oh, <laughs> I know that was hard for you because for those of you that you know don't know because nobody would, Deb got to visit me recently and we actually talked about her love for that's what cowboys do. We talked about that song while she was here. So I know that one was hard for you, but, but right. It it's much too young. I mean, it, it's hard to beat that one. Yeah. You just can't, you know, you just can't like his very first single. Come on. And I imagine how excited he was when it was on the radio, the first time that he heard it and all that. And so all of that and, and all of the times in concert, hearing him sing it, I just, I just had to pick it. And then you could even take Garth out of that equation and you hear Jimmy on that fiddle, you yeah. know, like especially live and in concert, it just raises the hair up on the back of my neck. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely, it's definitely much too young. What about you, Pete? Yeah. So no pressure, Pete. Yeah, no pressure because two's already picked it. <laughs> what do you think? Doesn't matter what I pick. Doesn't matter what I pick. But but I agree with you, Aunt Deb. Uh, that's what Cowboys Do off the new fun album is such a good song. And quite honestly, going forward. I think if you give that's what cowboys do a couple years, um, you know, and 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 let it fall into that normal rotation of what we all listen to, and you know, gets added to some people's favorite playlist because uh, I I know that it's on mine. I think that that song would do real well in a bracket like this, you know, in a year or two after it gets some legs underneath it. But when you put it up against a song like Much Too Young that basically took off and and started the career for Garth it's very unlikely that anything else will move on. So I picked much too young as well. And um, like you were saying, you know, when that song is, is played on the radio or it's played, you know, from a playlist or, or you see him in concert, it, there was just as much excitement watching me play it or watch him play it in the one man show. I mean, there's just something about that song that just gets you going. So it was much too young for me as well, but that's what Cowboys do is a great song. It is a really, really good song. Yeah, it is. It is. Wow, we are all in sync tonight. That's the we first are. time I we, think you guys this are is finally happening. starting to pay attention to my bracket picks. Finally, <laughs> Jeez, please. Yeah, we're just all doing what Pete wanted us yeah. to do. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now it's time to go into the third battle in today's cowboy song bracket, and that is "In Lonesome Dove" versus "Good Ride Cowboy." Oh, right. I will start mm -hmm. this one. So. This battle broke my heart because I love both of these songs. I mean, they are great songs and they're completely different. Like, how do you, Good Ride Cowboy versus In Lonesome Dove? Good Ride Cowboy is fun and playful and it's just Garth having a great time all about Chris Ledoux and, you know, pull your hat down tight and just Ledoux it. And the crowd goes crazy. We love that. But... Garth story songs, which is what In Lonesome Dove is. And it's probably his best story song. And Garth can do a story song like he does it better than anyone else. I, I, I mean, this was tough. It was really tough. But I had to go with In Lonesome Dove. I had to. So Pete, over to you. What'd you pick? So I, I agree with the Good Ride Cowboy as far as being fun and, and the whole Ledoux thing. Um, and I got to be honest, if there's anybody around me, I could promise you at any given time when it says pull your hat down tight and just do it, I'm going to be the one to scream it the loudest because that is my favorite part of that song. But as far as it being a tough choice for me, it really wasn't. In Lonesome Dove, I've mentioned it before and what that song means to me and how how much of where it falls at in my in my personal collection of Garth, it was pretty easy that In Lonesome Dove is going to move on for me. So, I, again, the story song is great. The the tone in Garth's voice and the story behind In Lonesome Dove. It's just one of those, if I'm in a mood where I need a song, uh, I could go right to In Lonesome Dove and, and, and everything changes for me. So, uh, 
I chose in Lonesome Dove, but one thing, it was weird. Like when I was kind of looking at him until then I thought about it a little bit, I didn't expect to see in Lonesome Dove in the cowboy songs, but then you listen to the song and I mean, it is, it fits, it belongs here. So in Lonesome Dove for me, what about you, Jess? Well, we are just all in sync tonight. (laughs) Of course I chose in Lonesome Dove. I mean, I love Good Ride Cowboy. I really do. I will sing that at the top of my lungs, just like everybody else. And like you guys mentioned, it's about Chris Ledoux. Like, you can't not love that song. But anyone who's listened to our podcast and heard the earlier episodes knows how much I love, how much all of us love, really, but how much I love Lonesome Dove. And there was very, very few songs in general at all that are going to beat that one for me. So, yeah, that was a very easy choice for me and would be against most things. So, in Lonesome Dove, hands down. It's funny when you said that and then I was talking about it. I literally went on to Amazon Music. I was about ready to start playing it and I realized we were recording. I couldn't do it. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that would background. have been a first. Yeah, could you imagine? If it comes on. Hey, I told you. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, this is it. So in our final first round bracket battle, it is the Beaches of Cheyenne versus Wolves. So Pete, who do you want to move on to the next round of battles? And who do you think should stay behind in the very first round? Well, I I don't like the fact that any of these have to stay behind. But the truth of the matter is, is they do. So for me tonight, uh, between the Beaches of Cheyenne and the Wolves, The Beaches of Cheyenne to me is another one of those um, storytelling songs. The lyrics behind it, the story that it tells, it's just one that has always, always, always been one that grabs my attention. The Wolves, I take nothing away from it. It's a great song. And we actually um, got to see a little bit of an acoustic part of it. And seeing the Wolves uh, and the acoustic part of it and then seeing the Beaches They were both really, really well done. But the Beaches of Cheyenne, its story and where it's at, the the Beaches of Cheyenne. Hands down for me, the Beaches of Cheyenne. It moves on past the wolves. That was probably out of this bracket. That was the easiest one for me to choose. So what about you, Jess? What's your thoughts on this one? I love both of these songs again. So far, nothing's really been thrown into the brackets that has been super easy for me where I could just be like, oh, yeah definitely not gonna don't even have to think about it at all but it had to be beaches of cheyenne for me i know wolves now but i you know we talked about when we covered that song before for anyone who listened that far back i wasn't familiar with it really then it's kind of a sad song like if you listen to it it's a melancholy you have to for me personally anyway be in the mood for that one whereas i feel like even though beaches of cheyenne is sad we talked about there's something like the music is kind of upbeat. There's still something that makes you just want to listen and kind of jam along to it, even though the story is very sad. Um, and so for me, it had to be Beaches of Cheyenne. What about you, Deb? Did you have any, like, was this an easy one for you or did you have to struggle a little bit? That's a good question. So thinking back, I guess, because I made me my notes a couple of days ago. So. I didn't struggle at all. It had to be Beaches of Cheyenne. I <laughs> oh, wait, this is the first time we went four for four. Yeah, we yeah. did. We finally agreed. We got perfect bracket. <laughs> yep, and that is not knocking wolves at all because, like I said in the the last bracket we just talked about, I love Garth story songs, and both of these are two really sad but good Garth story songs. Yes. And Wolves is beautiful. But like you said, Jess, I also was not familiar with it until we started this podcast. Like I knew I had kind of heard it and I I knew it, but it was too sad to listen to is what I remember thinking about it. And Beaches of Cheyenne, I never felt that way. Like you said, it's a crushing story, but at the same time, I love it. And I always have, and I always will. And if you've ever seen Garth in concert live, or even just watched any of his concert DVDs, just stop and think about what it's like when Beaches of Cheyenne starts. You get that fiddle and that drum combo, and instantly everybody's on their feet. Like we just, we all know what it is. It doesn't matter that it's a sad song. It's just far and away one of his best songs. And Wolves is a beautifully written song. It's a beautifully musical song. And Garth is great on it. But Beaches of Cheyenne, it would be hard to top that. 
So, yep, all four, all four tonight yep. we tied on. So, woo-hoo. Woo. no tiebreakers. That's a yeah, first. Yeah, it is. And that's good. I'm glad I was ready for a break because those other ones were hard. And I like this one. Yeah. This one, yeah. we all agreed. We didn't have to argue. We're good on this one. Yeah, this was the easiest one for me pairing them up there. I mean, there were a couple that I had to think a little bit, but for the most part, I I knew pretty quickly what I was going to pick. Yeah. The other brackets, I really struggled more for sure. Yeah, me too. I just can't believe we're done with our first round of brackets. Like that is crazy. I'm super excited, but also completely and absolutely dreading what comes next. (laughs) Yes, because I'm already sad for the songs we're leaving behind. Like, I mean, I know it's all going to get whittled down to one. So they're most of them are going to get left behind. But man, that's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to leave any of them on there on the kind of cutting room floor when we we love them all. Come on. The crazy thing is we could take all those non making it songs put them into another bracket with other songs that would fall in there. Cause obviously we have plenty of room to do it and then see how they would do up against the other things. It's like it's crazy. True. All this work it's true. Work. Yeah. And a different song could go so much farther based on just what it's right. paired up against. What it's against. Yeah, yeah. So maybe we'll have to revisit this first round, the knocked out ones and do like a, a one, one of those songs gets to move on. What would it be? And take all the other ones and pit them against each other. And we'll see where that goes. Yeah. See what happens. So that is the end of our first round of brackets for all four of the different categories. And now let's get into some breaking news. Breaking news. Garth Brooks returns to Notre Dame Stadium on May 7th, 2022, three years after he hosted the first concert in Notre Dame Stadium history. Tickets went on sale Friday, February 25th, so if you haven't gotten yours, go check it out now. See if there's any available. And don't forget, you can always look as the concert gets closer because Garth always releases production seats later. So give it a shot. You might get lucky. Now let's go over to Pete for a shout out to one of our very favorite Garthologists. Shout outs. This week's shout out goes to Kathy and Bubba Strauss. We just wanted to wish you guys a very, very happy, belated, but happy 31st wedding anniversary. That's a huge milestone. We saw you guys on ISG and uh, we just wanted to send our love and obviously wish you guys many more years of happiness and love with one another. And we appreciate your guys' support. So Kathy, Bubba, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, guys. Again, it was so great meeting you in Vegas. Happy anniversary, guys. Sorry I didn't get to meet you, but I hope it was a great one. Have you checked out our website at Garthology.com yet? If not, stop by today and check out our past episodes and bonus content. And remember to subscribe to our podcast on your podcast platform of choice. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, it's been quite a long time since our last review. So if you get the chance, please stop by and hit that five-star button if you like what you hear and that will encourage others to listen. Finally, be sure and share us with everyone you know. That way you can help your friends in low places become Garthologists too. Speaking of friends in low places, if you guys are on social media, you guys could find us at facebook.com backslash GarthologyCast. And if you guys are on Instagram and or Twitter, where we've been lucky enough to interact and be able to respond and talk with a lot of you guys. We are at Garthology cast at Instagram and Twitter. We do appreciate the interaction. We do appreciate the tweets, the retweets, the shares, the likes. And if you guys have any questions or ideas about the podcast, if you don't want to reach out on the website, you guys are more than welcome to direct message us on any social media platform, and we will be happy to get back to you. So we appreciate the support guys. Thank you. Be sure to join us for our next episode of Garthology, where we'll be taking a break from the Garth games to do a little review of current events and what's been happening on the most recent episodes of Inside Studio G. That will be Season 3, Episode 6, and will be available on your podcast platform of choice on March 17th. Until then, this has been Season 3, Episode 5 of Garthology, and I'm Deb. I'm Pete. And I'm Jess. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. (laughs) I knew you were going to try to. Bye, she said. Bye. (laughs) Bye, everybody. That was funny. Finish it! Finish it! (laughs) 
He's like, hey, it's time to podcast, and lately I've been part of it. Pick me up. I need to get on camera. <laughs> Bo man, what's up, buddy? And the beaches of Cheyenne. Do you know that people will pay a lot of money on OnlyFans for pictures of feet like that? Baby feet? <laughs> <laughs> Between his face being there, I look up and there's a feet in there. I was like, oh, I've seen people make money off of that. I was like, baby feet. Bo's feet Venmo is at Bo's feet. <laughs> I would never do that to you, son. I won't exploit your feet. I don't know. That might buy you a diaper or two. Huh? You might want to think about that. Well, that's true. Yeah.